to Rick Santelli in Chicago with a special guest, Rick. Thank you very much, Simon. The great deformation, the corruption of capitalism in America. What a title, what a book, what a dude. Welcome <laughs> David Stockman. Here. Yeah. You know, I don't think many out there will realize a couple of things. First of all, I remember when I was in the 30-year bond pit right. and your headlines hit about deficits, right. we actually saw treasury prices fall and yields move up. You're not a big fan of deficits. You weren't a big fan of deficits under Reagan, were you? No, and I'm not a big fan of money printing either. <clears throat> and back then, we had an honest Fed. Volcker was running it. It wasn't uh, rigging interest rates. It wasn't trying to drive the wealth effect. It wasn't flooding the market with untold liquidity. And therefore, the market could judge what Congress was doing, the White House was doing, and decide where the risk and reward equation was and how to price the bond, the note, the bills. Today, the market is entirely rigged. It's not honest. It all trades the Fed. There's huge carry trades, overnight money, six years, zero. How how can that possibly lead to rational behavior? So this has made it possible for the deficits, which have been growing chronically for decades, to be financed because they're shoving them in the vaults of all the central banks of the world. They're all doing it, and it's created an unsustainable, dangerous uh, uh, financial system. The conservatives in the House are all about deficits, but the rest of the country doesn't seem very concerned. And if you Try to come up with one issue that's relevant today to prove, aha, deficits matter. It's hard to find that. Why do you think that is? Because of these, the error of central banking that has become universal for the last two decades. And it's made possible uh, deficits without tears, as one uh, economist said. So how do we said. get the tears? That we get the tears by telling the people that you're going to have to pay taxes in order to fund all of this spending that you seem to want. And and once the people actually feel the pain of taxes, we should have let the Bush tax cuts oh, expire. Let me stop you right there. Once they so feel you're the advocating something many conservatives don't advocate. You think yes. we ought to raise taxes. Oh, uh, conservatives traditionally believed cut spending first, but if you can't do it enough, you have to raise the revenue to pay your bills. They didn't believe in starve the beast. They believed in pay your bills. That's why I make Eisenhower a great hero in my book. He balanced the budget four times. We got off track in the 1980s when the illusion was created that deficits don't matter and then when Greenspan turned the Fed into a bubble machine and began to monetize the debt and it spread around the world. So therefore we're in a real dilemma. Our political system is paralyzed and frozen. We're looking at, I think, 10 to 15 trillion of more debt in the next 10 years. Add it to the 17 we have. You're at 130, 140 percent of GDP. The system will go tilt, and it all depends on how soon the central bank loses control of this entire monstrous the wave. The last election, in many ways, in the fiscal cliff, in very specific ways, did raise taxes on a very small group. So the group of the middle class outside of payroll taxes, right. their taxes remained at the same rate. Right. At issue here is it you're saying if you want to get the country's attention, raise taxes on everybody. But if the Democratic Party stays in power and that doesn't happen, will there be a price to pay? If we don't get the tiers doing it the way you advocate, higher taxes, you could see what the deficits are doing. How is this going to end if administrations refuse to do so? Well, you just keep building on the national debt. That is not a viable, sustainable way. You're taxing future generations. You're taxing the unborn. And they're going to thank you someday for the massive disaster that was handed to them. But as long as we have one party saying no taxes, the other party saying Social Security is sacrosanct when it needs to be means tested and drastically reformed, when you have both parties in the thrall of the military industrial complex and so we're still spending 650 billion for defense in a world where we have no industrial state enemies we're so the going honesty to will be in the raising of the taxes and finally finally the honesty would come when you tell the middle class you're not going to get your tax uh, cut you're going to actually pay more then they will wake up then the pitchforks and torches will come out then they will march on Washington and demand that we do something about these giant programs that are simply 
really drifting today because everybody thinks that the Fed will take care of we the debt. We have to go. I want one number from you. If you were in charge, how much would you cut defense spending, for 20%. example? 20%. No problem. I think we can end it there. <laughs> Many think they understand David Stockman. They don't. He definitely advocates many issues that both parties like but can't get together on. Back to you. It's a great point, Rick. Thanks very much for that interview.